hallelujah. Before I have you stand to your feet, I'm going to review just a little bit. The song touched on it a little bit. It said, God cannot fail. And if you weren't here for last week's message, world taught us, hallelujah, that all the promises of God will come to pass. From Joshua 21, 45, it says, There fail not on any good thing which the Lord had spoken unto the house of Israel. All came to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. You should get that message. Amen. We don't even sell it no more. You should buy one anyway. Amen. Hallelujah. You should at least go on YouTube or Facebook and listen to Hallelujah. The message. It all will. It will all come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Lord went through the whole book of Joshua telling us Hallelujah about how God brought everything to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. God wants you to have good success. God wants you to walk in his abundance. God wants you to live, hallelujah, in liberty. Hallelujah. God wants you to have whole life prosperity. Hallelujah. And it will come to pass. Amen. Hallelujah. We're all taught us, one, you need to know that something's happening when it looks like nothing's happening. Two, you got to come to church. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the clarion call, hallelujah, of the trumpet, hallelujah, when they walked around the walls of Jericho seven times, seven days, seven times, seven trumpets, hallelujah, the, that the clarion call of the trumpet, hallelujah, is the preaching, the prophetic preaching of the word of God. Let you know, hallelujah, that something new is on the horizon. You can't hear it unless you come to church. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. We learned three that you got to stop complaining. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You might mess up what God is trying to bless up. Hallelujah. Right. By you complaining. Amen. Amen. Four, deal with the sin within. Whether that's within you or within your camp of people that you got surrounded. Yes. Right. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Five, be prepared <laughs> for the unexpected battles. Hallelujah. Let God fight your battles. Amen. Hallelujah. Six, avoid burnout and complacency. Hallelujah. Don't lose your zeal, hallelujah, in what God has told you as you're waiting for your breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. It's coming. Six was know that numbers don't matter to God. If your opposition looks like it's outnumbering you, hallelujah, you and God make up the majority. Amen. Hallelujah. It don't matter how much or how big the problem is that's coming towards you. God is bigger. Hallelujah. And eight, he said, was we must have patience. Let patience have her perfect Word. Amen. Hallelujah. You must have patience. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because some things don't come easy. Tell somebody, some things don't come easy. <laughs> some things don't come easy. So we must have patience. Joshua chapter 11 verse 16. Joshua, the 11th chapter, the 16th verse. Once you get there, let me hear you say, Hallelujah, I'm there. Hallelujah, I'm there as well. It says this. So Joshua took all that land, the hills and all the south country and all the land of Goshen, hallelujah, and the valley and the plain and the mountain of Israel and the valley of of the same, even unto the mount, Mount Halak, that goeth up to Mount Seir, even unto Balgad, in the valley of Lebanon, under Mount Hermon. And all their kings he took, and smote them, and slew them. And verse 18 says, Joshua made war 
a long time with those kings. Because what we see here is that some things don't come easy. Amen? Hallelujah. Up to that point, everything was easy for the children of Israel. Amen? They crossed the Red Sea with Moses lifting a stick. Hallelujah. God took care of them for 40 years, even though they decided to walk in circles. They crossed over the Jordan River, hallelujah, just by taking steps. They took the city of Jericho, hallelujah, by a shout. They took the city of Ai by a strategy. They took the Gibeonites by surrender. They took the five kings of the South of the north, the, the south, the cabal, hallelujah, as I call it, with surprise. They took the they took the five kings of the Ammonites by succession. And they took the king, ten kings of the north, but that was by a struggle. It took a long time. Because sometimes what God has to teach you and me is that some things don't come easy. Amen? Amen. 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 Some things don't come easy. Turn in your Bibles to Exodus. Exodus chapter 2. Exodus chapter 2. Amen. Hallelujah. Similar to the word we use, exit. Hallelujah. It's how we come out. Amen. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 13. Tell somebody I'm coming out. Hallelujah. I'm coming out, hallelujah, of what I've been fighting with a long time. Hallelujah. I'm coming out of my struggle. I'm coming out of my battle. I'm coming out of my depression. I'm coming out of my pain. I'm coming out. Hallelujah. Even though it took a long time. Hallelujah. This is my time. I'm coming out. Exodus chapter 13, verse 17 says, And it came to pass. When Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and then return to Egypt. Amen? Amen. God could have taken them on a less than 40 day trip from Egypt to the promised land. But the children of Israel had been enslaved for 400 years. Amen? That lets me know that physically they were probably strong. But mentally they had a slave, captive, subservient mentality that had to be strengthened. And God says, I can't take them straight into the promises. Why? Because the promises take more faith than the problems. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It takes more faith to be a landlord than a tenant. Amen? It takes more faith to be a business owner than an employee. A lot, of, a lot of the things that we see that we say, that's what I want to be. Hallelujah. It takes faith in order for you to live at that level. Hallelujah. Some would say new levels, new devils. But I say new levels, new responsibilities. New levels, new requirements. You got to increase your faith to move from this level to this level. Not because of the devils, but because of the blessings. You gotta be able to believe God for more. Hallelujah. Therefore, there's some lessons in life that God will teach us through, hallelujah, difficulty, because some things don't come easy. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The grind prepares you for the grace. <laughs> hallelujah. The grind prepares you for the grace. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Joshua, chapter 6. I don't think this is going to be a long message. I usually say that before my long messages. <laughs> Hallelujah. But y'all have been so attentive and 
anticipated so well today, amen. I think maybe we should cut it short and reward you for being the best congregation on this side of heaven. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. For those that might see this message somewhere, amen, this is the best congregation in the on the face of the planet, on this side of heaven, amen. Hallelujah. So if you want to be a part, amen, this is the place to join. If you're messy, this ain't the place to join. <laughs> Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. It says, Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. They came to a point before the walls came down that they saw an insurmountable, unconquerable, untakeable, unbreakable fortress in front of them. They could not take Jericho with an army. They needed God's help. Amen? Just the chapter before, it tells about how Jesus in a theophany, amen, in a physical appearance before he came through Mary, he came and he stood outside the walls of Jericho with Joshua. And the Bible says Joshua didn't know what he was seeing or who he was, was so he drew his sword. He said, are you with them or are you with us? And the angel of the Lord, Jesus manifest physically said, neither because Jesus doesn't come to take sides he comes to take over hallelujah and so what we have to learn to do is trust in his grace to let him take over amen and see sometimes what we need to do is grind to figure out that we can't do it by ourselves have y'all been doing that? Have you ever experienced that? Where you worked and you sweated and you tried and you planned and you budgeted and you did everything that you thought you could do and it wasn't enough. See, that's to teach you to appreciate the grace. Some things don't come easy, amen, hallelujah, because you got to learn not only to depend on it, but to appreciate it. Amen? Amen. My Bible says this, if we don't remember who helped us and how we got through, we'll get what God has for me and you, and then we'll say, it was my power, my smarts, my money, my intellect, my ability, my connections, my know-how that got me what I got. And we'll forget the Lord. God says, sometimes I got to let you struggle. Because I need you to realize, hallelujah, it's not by your power, nor by your might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need that some things don't come easy so we can appreciate the grace. The grind helps us to appreciate the grace. Amen? Hallelujah. The natural prepares us for the spiritual. Amen? Amen. This is, I'm telling you why some things don't come easy. If you're wondering why am I still going through, why am I still not at the position I prayed for, why has it not happened yet? Because sometimes, some things, God can't allow them to come easy to you because you will forget to give him the glory. Hallelujah. The grind prepares us for the grace and the natural prepares us for the spiritual. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew 4. And just following up the grind and the grace. Amen. Hallelujah. Do you know that the average business that is handed down from one generation to the next when that first person that built it, sweated and worked and saved and did everything that they could to build it. You know, when they worked hard to build it, oftentimes when they hand it down to people that 
didn't have to work for it, they lose it. What's the percentage? 80% of businesses that are given to people that don't appreciate the grind, those businesses close. The grind teaches us to appreciate the grace. And the natural prepares us for the spiritual. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 18. And as you find your place, this is not another message to tell you why things are going to take a long time. This is to explain why it has taken a long time. Hallelujah. I'm letting you know, hallelujah, that your breakthrough is near. Hallelujah. If it's not here, hallelujah, because you've been faithful for a long time. Hallelujah. And you're learning what God is showing you. Hallelujah. How to get through to your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Even though some things don't come easy. Matthew 4, 18. It says, And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea. For they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I'll stop right there because what I want you to see is that sometimes the natural prepares you for the spiritual. See, if Jesus had walked up to carpenters or tax collectors or farmers and said, I'm going to make you fishers of men, that would not really have registered like it did when he was talking to fishermen. Amen? Amen. God uses the natural things that we encounter to prepare us for the spiritual. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. If you want to understand something about being a pastor, first you should be a parent. <laughs> if you want to understand something about, hallelujah, being a position of spiritual authority, first understand something about submitting to natural authority. Amen? Amen. The natural prepares you for the spiritual. Amen. Hallelujah. If can't nobody tell you what to do at work, amen, you ain't going to do nothing what you're supposed to do in church. Amen. Hallelujah. And then you'll wonder why it is when you get in a leadership position, don't nobody listen to you. Hmm. I went off the side went off the side. <laughs> but the natural prepares us for the spiritual. God in his loving kindness and his omnipotent wisdom make sure that you are not ill-equipped for what he has for you. Amen? Amen. Amen? Hallelujah. Before he made Paul a an apostle that establishes and builds churches, he made him first a tent maker so that he could understand the purpose of a firm foundation. So we can understand the purpose, hallelujah, of lengthening the cords, strengthening the stakes, hallelujah, extending, hallelujah, the curtains, all those things that are necessary, hallelujah, if you're going to cause a church, hallelujah, to be stable, established, rooted, grounded, firm, and fixed in the foundation of the word of God, he first learned this stuff building tents. Amen? Amen. Amen. God will use what you go through and what you've been through to help you to understand spiritual things. It's called a parable. Amen? Amen. Jesus would often teach in parables to help those that wanted to learn be able to understand spiritual things. Hallelujah. God will use you know, what you've been through to teach you. It's why some things haven't come easy. Because he's using what you've been through to teach you something about spiritual authority. Hmm. I'm trying to make it short. But verses of scripture keep popping in my head. Amen. I'm reminded of when the Bible says Jesus had a centurion come and talk to him and say, my servant is sick. Come on, sir. And Jesus said, hmm. 
I'll come and heal him. Because he was with the brother named Jairus. Jairus said, if you come and lay hands on my daughter, she'll be healed. So Jesus said, well, that's your faith is. That's what we'll do. We'll come walk across town to where your daughter is now lay hands on her. The centurion said, man, you ain't got to do all that. I know how authority works. He said, I'm a man in authority because I'm a centurion. I got at least a hundred soldiers under me. And I'm a man under authority because I got folks over me. And I say to this one, he go, and I tell this one, do that, and he does this. And my servant and my soldiers do what I say just at my word, hallelujah. So I know every situation and every circumstance is subject to you. All you got to do is speak the word. He understood the spiritual authority because of his experience with natural authority. God will take the natural and use it to help you to understand and walk in the spiritual. So that you can understand the spiritual authority, hallelujah, that is given to you and me in the kingdom, hallelujah, of heaven, hallelujah. Because we represent the king, hallelujah, everything that the king says is law, therefore, hallelujah, whatever God tells you to do is bound by law, not just by you, but every circumstance, hallelujah, that comes against you, it's got to bow to the power of the law of the king. Hallelujah. The king of everything. And because we understand, hallelujah, the things in the natural kingdoms, amen, it allows us to understand the power and authority of the spiritual kingdom, hallelujah, that is the kingdom of heaven. The natural things prepare us for the spiritual Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you understand that every natural kingdom has, hallelujah, a, a, a language, you'll understand, hallelujah. That's why I got to pray according to the B-I-B-L-E, because this is the language of the spiritual kingdom of heaven. If you must understand that every natural kingdom has its own currency, hallelujah, then you'll understand, hallelujah, that by faith, hallelujah, faith is the currency of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. And if you understand that every natural kingdom has its own customs and laws, you'll understand why it is. You got to live by the law of the kingdom of heaven as a representative of Jesus Christ. You got to understand, <clears throat> hallelujah, that when you walk as an ambassador of Christ, living by his rules, regulations, words, and laws, hallelujah, then you as an ambassador, hallelujah, you are exempt, hallelujah, from the laws of the, the world you live in. As an ambassador, hallelujah, everything that you need is supplied by the king. And as an ambassador, hallelujah, when you say hallelujah, but the king told you to, hallelujah, it's got to work just like if the king said it out of his own mouth. And the reason we can understand this spiritually is because we understand kingdoms naturally. Amen? Amen. The natural prepares us for the spiritual. The little things prepare us for the much. I'm talking about why some things don't come easy. Why did I have to start off with little? Why did I have to start off, hallelujah, struggling? Why did I not, hallelujah, why didn't God just, why don't God just open up a cloud and pour out what I need? Because some things don't come easy. Because if God doesn't change my mentality, you bless a broke person with a million dollars and they'll be broke again in a few years. <laughs> Somebody needs some help here. You bless a whoremonger with a wife 
Speak, sir. Speak. And he will understand the precious jewel that he has at home. And he'll go out looking for fast home food when he's got home cooking at home. <laughs> you got to understand. Speak, sir. Speak. The reason God takes you the way he takes you is because he's preparing you for something better. Hallelujah. Therefore, it's not just a matter of God giving it. It's a matter of you being able to receive it. So some things don't come easy. The little prepares us for the much. Luke's Gospel, chapter 16. Is that too much? Okay. I got to check on my wife and make sure that uh, what I'm saying is not uh, it's not out of bounds. That seems to be the only way to get more views on the internet, though. I got to say something that's mildly out of bounds, and then people start thinking about it. Did you hear what that preacher said? The little prepares us for the much. Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 10, it says, He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in least is unjust also in much. The little prepares you for much. Amen? Amen. The little prepares you for much. If you can't be faithful with a little bit, you won't be faithful with a lot. <laughs> I remember years ago, I was working. So you got to learn how to operate on whatever level you're at in order for God to get you ready for the next one. Amen? Hallelujah. And, you know, we started this church from the ground up. Amen? Hallelujah. With just a few members. Deacon as Tanya's been with us the whole time. Amen? But it's, you know, we've been just rocking. We was rocking with just a handful of people. Amen? Handful. Five. I got five kids. That's how I feel like the hand right there. We said we're going to grow this church one way or another. Amen. Hallelujah. Even if it's one kid at a time. Hallelujah. But we learned how to operate with just a little bit. And I was fixing something, and Royal said, Dad, you know a ghetto way to fix just about anything. <laughs> because that's the level we was operating on. But if we couldn't be faithful with that little bit, why would God trust us with more? Amen? If God can't trust you with a little bit, how can he trust you with more? Amen? Hallelujah. <laughs> it's a little side note. If you have somebody that's always asking you for money, give them a loan. Give them a small loan. And then, if they don't pay it back, you then be released from having to give them money every time they ask for it. Because they prove that they can't be faithful to you with just a little. I'm back now. <laughs> Hallelujah. The loaner prepares us to be an owner. Amen? Amen? I'm talking about why some things don't come easy. Amen? Hallelujah. The loaner prepares you for the owner. It's right there in the same verse of the same chapter, Luke's Gospel, chapter 16, verse 12. And if ye have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who shall give you that which is your own? If you can't pay rent, you can't pay mortgage. The loaner prepares you for the owner. If you can't be faithful in that which is somebody else's, how is God going to bless you with your own? How many people have we met that have started churches? Started churches and those churches came and went. 
We made a lot of bank a lot in the last 20 something years. I believe that it's in part because they were never faithful members of a church. And therefore, because they were never faithful in that which is another man's, they couldn't handle having their own. I remember years ago when we first left to come here and Bishop laid his hands on me and prayed. He said, I pray to God to bless you with people that have been as faithful, that will be as faithful to you as you have been to me. Because I was, I started off from a parking lot ministry. In the parking lot ministry, it's like ushers in the parking lot in a big church. And so you're standing out there in the rain, the sleet. It was Texas, so we won't say the snow. We ain't gonna stretch it. <laughs> you know, they shut the whole state down if they have all the snow. But you stand out there in the rain and the heat, and you're ushering people in to the parking lot. Now, they go to Walmart all the time. They don't have a parking car. But what you're doing, before they even get into the church, you're greeting them with a smile. <laughs> Why? Because you're the first one of the defense of the guarding of the anointing of the house, hallelujah. And you got to break some of the spirits off of folks before they even get in there. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We were out there praying and issuing people in, ushering people in. Why? Hallelujah. So that when they got in, they'd be able to receive and believe the gospel. Amen? It started in the parking lot. I was then, hallelujah, my wife and I were assisted deacons. Amen? We assisted the deacons. We called people, everybody, once a month. Called the new people when they joined the church. And we as assistants deacons were faithful to do what assistants deacons do. We would call people once a month. Some folks, when you call them, you know, because everybody that joins a big church don't really... It, it was just caught up in a moment. <laughs> so we would call, don't call my house no more. <laughs> he called it brother. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be faithful in somebody else's ministry. We then joined the children's church ministry. Amen? Hallelujah. The only people in church they don't get a choice as to whether or not they get to come on <laughs> are the kids. And so our job was to take everybody's people that they took hostage and kidnapped and brought to church and minister to them in a way that they could leave with something that they could believe. Not watering the word of God down, but breaking it down. Amen? Amen? We did that for seven years. And so we were faithful in another man's ministry for almost 10 years before God released us into our own. The first step to God blessing you with your own is you learning how to be faithful in the position that somebody else loans you. That's why some things can't come easy. Because if it wasn't for the preparation of being in somebody else's ministry, then we would have fainted just like we saw hundreds of other people do over the years of trying to do what God has called us to do. Because <laughs> for whoever is wondering, it ain't easy. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You started churches in other countries. Y'all know mm. it ain't easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Doing what God tells you to do sometimes, it ain't easy, but God will prepare you. He'll prepare you for being in a position he prepared for you. Amen. Joseph, hallelujah. You know about Joseph. Joseph, one of the children of Israel, one of 
Jacob's 12 sons, Joseph ended up being second in command of the largest nation, which was actually the leader of the world, the, the second command, the most powerful nation in the world. And the reason he was able to hold that position is because first, he was faithful to what belonged to his father. Then he was faithful to what belonged to Potiphar. Then he was faithful to do what he was supposed to do in prison. Being in somebody else's ministry prepared him for what God had for him in his own. Amen? Amen? Amen. So if what you've been going through has not been easy, it's because it's preparing you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's changing your perspective. It's changing how you see things. Amen? Amen? Amen. See, if you don't see things correctly, it'll cause you not to be able to appreciate what God has for you to do what he tells you to do faithfully. It's a matter of perspective. It's a matter of principle. Because God's going to do what he told you he's going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. For his own name's sake. It's going to come to pass. All that he promised you will come to pass for his name's sake. And it's a matter of persistence. Can you stay with it and not quit it until it comes to pass? When the Son of Man comes with what he promised you, will he find faith on the earth? Will you stay humble and stay hungry? See, in order for there's some things that don't come easy because they gotta train you to both stay humble and stay hungry. Tell somebody humble and hungry. Humble and hungry. Hallelujah. You gotta stay humble and hungry. See, humility is not oftentimes what we think. We think humble means I say, oh, I'm just no good. I'm just low down, dirty. No, that's not, that's not true humility. True humility realizes that it's nothing without God. <laughs> Hallelujah. But by his grace, I can do all things through him. Caleb means dog. And 
And Caleb, the Bible said, had the same hunger, the same desire, the same tenacity, the same want to. Hallelujah. 80, or shall I say 45 years later than he had when God initially showed him a promise. He stayed hungry. Caleb means dog. And you got to develop some dog in you. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We were watching the NBA championship. Amen? Hallelujah. And there's been a debate where somebody in the NBA said, I could take 30 players from the NBA and put them in the NFL and they succeed. And the NFL players say, no, they might be bigger, they might be faster, they might even be stronger, but they ain't got no dog in them. The first time I come and hit them when they come off the line, they'll fold up and they'll quit. Now see, you, you gotta have some dog in you. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And the reason some things don't come easy is because, hallelujah, God's gotta develop some dog in you. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You gotta have some dog in you. Amen? Go ahead and tell your neighbor, bow, bow, bow. <laughs> 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 you gotta have some dog in you in order for you to walk in all that God has for you amen because what God has for you is bigger than where you are where God is taking you hallelujah requires more faith than what you need right now so if you're wondering why has it taken so long, it's because some things don't come easy because, hallelujah, God is taking you to a new level. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, hallelujah, for developing dog in us. <laughs> hallelujah doggedness where we know how to sink our teeth into a promise from God and won't let go. Hallelujah. Until you bless us, we thank you Father God. Hallelujah. That we will not run at the first sign of adversity. Hallelujah. Because we know some things don't come easy. You're building champions. You're making great people. Hallelujah. And you're causing, hallelujah, the people that you have in the church to grow even more importantly than causing the church to grow. I thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. That right here, in here, hallelujah, we have champions. We have overcomers. We have succeeders. We have achievers because we are all receivers of your grace. The grind has prepared us for the grace. And we appreciate it. Hallelujah. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. For somebody who you've been wondering why you're going through, it's because God has been preparing you for such a time as this. And the struggles that you've been going through ought to lead you to Jesus. Jesus is Savior. Jesus is sanctified. Jesus is supplier. Jesus is everything you need. And you've been trying it your own way. All the things that you, all the hell you've been going through are so that you can come to a point where you reach the end of you and say, I receive Jesus. If you have come to that point, just say this simple prayer with me. Say, Father God, I thank you for sending your son Jesus Christ. I believe in my heart. And 
and I say with my mouth that Jesus Christ died for my sins and rose again. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and change my life. If you pray this simple prayer, you just made a life-changing decision. It's why you've been going through what you've been going through up to this point to bring you to this point. The point, hallelujah, of changing your life through Jesus Christ. And if you for some reason thought that the grass was greener on the other side, even though you at one point in time came from that side or this side, you looked and you thought you were missing something, but you figured out that it ain't greener. It ain't better. Whatever pleasure I might have encountered, it was followed up by a whole lot of pain. I'm coming back to a right relationship with Jesus Christ. If that's you, all you got to do is make a comeback. <laughs> God is calling you back. A saint can never go back into the world and not experience difficulty, turmoil, problems, pain, persecution, and all kind of hell. Why? Because a loving father will chastise his children to let you know you know you're in the wrong place. Come on. Come back to Jesus. If you made a comeback, send us a text. Amen. Send us a, something in the chat. Somehow let us know hallelujah that you received and believed Jesus again or you received Jesus for the first time. Hallelujah. And if you don't have a place that you belong to where you say, that's my church. That's my church family. That's my pastor. This is the place for you. If you want to be a member of Ornament of Grace Christian Center, while every eye is closed and every head is bowed, I ask that you please raise your hand. Bring your vision board back to life with the Vision Workbook. Available now. Contact the Ornament of Grace Christian Center at 913-240-6262. Comfort is complacency is stagnancy. Right. And nothing's growing, nothing's happening. And how do you stay encouraged to continue when you see nothing changing? nothing growing, right. nothing happening, gotcha. you have to grow in order to continue. Mm -hmm. um, otherwise, you become stale, stagnant, and obsolete. Mm -hmm. right. What do you say to those people who, because they're thinking like, I tried one time, I tried multiple times, you know, and it didn't happen, and I failed. What do you say to those people? Well, one, failure is never final right. until you quit. Mm -hmm. I believe this wholeheartedly, that God is the God that opens doors and no man can shut, and right. shuts doors and no man can open. Mm -hmm. So even a shut door, Right. is direction Get toward yeah. into what you're supposed to be doing. It's direction into better. Exactly. So they're really, you can't fail. Exactly. That's part of the, that's part of life. Absolutely. You know, nobody, nobody I know <laughs> gets everything right the first time. All right. And if they say they do, they lie. They lie. <laughs> <laughs> and when you think about that, you know that any failure has to be just a detour right. or just a delay mm -hmm. or just a training tool that was necessary to prepare you for what was really on the horizon for you. Absolutely. Nothing, ne you, ne failure is never final. Absolutely. That all we are assigned to do is continue mm -hmm. in the race that God gave to us. Mm -hmm. And doing what God tells you to do is success. Mm -hmm. It can't be 
compared to somebody else. Right. It can't be measured in dollars, cents, numbers, mm -hmm. acres. It's did you do what God told you to do? Right. That's success. That's success. Absolutely. God, the Bible says this. Noah, Job, and Daniel. Either is it Dan it was Daniel. It said these three didn't win anybody. Mm -hmm. That's what it said. But they were preachers of righteousness. Right. Our success is not measured in an objective. Mm -hmm. Our success is measured in did we continue? Absolutely. Did we do the will? Are we finishing the work? Mm -hmm. Are we continuing what God told us to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. And so that's what I hope to do. I hope to encourage people. Whatever it is that you feel like God told you to do, stay with it. Don't quit it. Continue. Because mm -hmm. God will be glorified in the end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. We thank you and praise you, Heavenly Father, for glass ceilings being removed, mm -hmm. barriers falling down, horizons being broadened, tents being enlarged, stakes being spread out, cords being strengthened, Father God. People realizing at this point that where they are is not their destiny nor their destination. Mm -hmm. And all they need to do to get to what you have for them is continue. 